Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and notaries of all ages to how to start and build your general notary work business. I'm very excited about this class because general notary work is a good business to be in if you work that business right. Judith and I wrote a book, Make Your Business Our Business, so that's why we're doing this class. Everybody knows Judith? Yay! Yay! She's one of the most hardworking, dedicated notaries. She does not, and this is for the signing agents out there, does not even own a car. Her business is booming, okay? So whatever she says, you wanna take a lot of notes. My name is Daniel Lewis, been a notary since 2003. Uh, started off like a many, many of you started off uh, doing loan signings. I evolved into doing a lot of general notary work. So that's what, primarily what I do now. It was 2010 uh, National Notary of the Year. Um, in that same year, made Honorary Secretary of State in Indiana. And now I teach classes and do this kind of stuff for notaries. So the objectives of this class is to how to start and build a general notary work business. The next objective is discover the benefits of starting your own general notary work business. Understand steps needed to start a successful business. That's important. Tips on maintaining your business to ensure long-term success. Before I go into any more slides, I'm going to give you, give you guys five tips that help me earn more money because you came here to know how to make money as a general notary. The first way, tell people you are a notary. <laughs> Do you know how many people don't tell people they are a notary? You know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. I'll give you an example. I was in a business notarizing a document for this lady. She had a business office. When I was leaving the office, I had on one of my Lewis notary shirts on. Her next door neighbor came out and said, oh my God, I was just out looking for a notary. Can you come and notarize these documents for me? I said, yes. The business owner runs out and says, wait a minute, I'm a notary. Why didn't you ask me? <laughs> she never told them that she was a notary, losing money. That's the first thing you need to do. Next thing you need to do is network. Everybody says, oh yeah, network. I'm a notary, how do I network? I'll go to these coffee shops, I go in these rooms and tell people I'm a notary and they got, an, they got a financial guy, they got somebody there from the bank, they got an accountant, how do I network? A couple of very effective ways to network is network with people that are gonna be your clients. For example, one uh, notary told me she was very effective at networking with the bar association in her state. Because a lot of attorneys, anybody ever work for attorneys? Mm -hmm. Has, do attorney needs, attorneys need notaries? Yeah. Network with people that need your service. That makes sense? So network in those areas. Also, I would recommend, if you are doing this full time, going to your local chamber of commerce and networking there. And if you can, join the local chamber of commerce, because a lot of times they have a special fee for small business owners to get you in there. Join this chamber of commerce and then join the membership committee. Look at, you can a lot of times go on their website, look at their membership, and see does these businesses actually use our, my service? Make sense? Third one, get involved in your community. One of the questions I get asked a lot, how can you become a notary of the year? How can you become a notary of the year? Well, what are you doing in your community? My community, what are you talking about? As a notary, you can go to your local schools, high schools, athletic directors, music department directors, and say, hey, I'm a notary. Let me come in and do notarizations for your families when you have to take those school trips. You know how special that is in your community? Go to the local VFWs, American Legion. Do you charge for that? I usually don't charge for that. But each of you have your own personalities have your own experiences, and you have to determine that. But I don't charge for that in my community. You can come up with, I'll be there one day a week, or one day a month, and do that for you. I know you're gonna have this big trip coming up. Even our junior highs are going on big trips. Another uh, great idea uh, is doing a community shred day. I've had the privilege of working on a community shred day with the famous Doug Deboat back there. Doug, you wanna admit, say, Say a couple words about what happened with the shred day we did last. Yeah, it rained, <laughs> but uh, those work really well. You can partner with a local bank. Mm -hmm. And how many 
new notaries or even seasoned notaries a budget, like you're budgeting, you get a very small budget. Here's how the shred day thing worked. Contact a local bank. Do banks use notaries sometimes? Yeah. Oh, oh, good, good. We contact a local bank and say, we want to put on a shred day for our community. We just want to get some information out to our community about what notaries do in the community and how we help protect the community with their private documents. So we went out and hired a, shr a shred truck. You just can Google shred trucks in your community. Use the bank's parking lot because the banks, they have, do you know banks are required to have some type of community service project? Did you know that? Yes. So they love, if you're going to organize it, they'll say, use our parking lot. You can put signs out in front of our banks. And not only that, we're going to donate to your cause, which paid for the sh shred trucks. All you do is market it on social media. And since you're already in the schools, the VFWs, the American Legions, you can market it there, too. How much money have you spent? Does that make sense? Because I was on, you heard of a shoestream budget. I was on a dental floss budget. <laughs> so you have to be innovative. Network with other notaries. This young lady up at the front said this is her first conference. She's scared to death. I was scared to death when I came to my first conference. I didn't know anybody. I came by myself. But I networked with other notaries. When you network with other notaries, this is what happens. This, I networked with a lady named Quincy Perry. And I said, hey, Quincy, I'm new. You've been doing this for a while. If you get some jobs, can you send them my way? Because she's seen that I was here and I was taking notes, just like you guys, and very professional. And she said, yeah, but Daniel, if you get something, would you send it my way? <laughs> so Quincy would send me work. I would send Quincy work. How much did it cost me? You seeing that trend that's happening? Does, would that work for you guys on that dental floss budget? Yes. If you're in this room, you got to understand, you have to, at some point, evolve your business. Because some things you do now are not going to make sense three years from now. You're going to say, I was running my business like this. Now I'm running my business differently. Because just being very honest here. Can I be honest with you guys? Every quarter, if you want to be successful in this business, every quarter you need to be looking at your business mm -hmm. and looking at, where's my numbers? You need to know your numbers in this business. Let me just say this again. You need to know your numbers in this business. Because this is a business. This isn't some, for me, this isn't some, well, I'll do this every now and then to get grandkids, some toys, or something like that. This is a business. This is how I pay my mortgage. Every quarter, you should treat this like a business. You're looking at your numbers. You're looking at seeing how profitable am I? Am I making more money here? Where is the trends going in my industry? What is those laws that's going to affect how I uh, conduct my business? Anybody ever look at that? You got to look at this as a business. Mm -hmm. How am I vetting my customers if I'm a signing agent? Am I vetting my customers? Am I busy? Do I have enough time to look and see if my business is efficient and effective? Because there's a wave in this industry, and we need to be on that wave. Being here helps you get on that wave. That makes sense? Creating and maintaining a web presence. A lot of people go out and hire people to optimize their website and, and that type of thing. A couple of years ago, and this is just my own personal feeling about that, whenever somebody wants to find me, notary near me, and my information pops up, and I haven't hired anybody. A couple of years ago, the National Notary Association had a gentleman that sold swimming pools. Anybody was here for that? What he did was he sold more swimming pools than anybody else in his area. How he did that, he went online and said, who's the best swimming pool manufacturer? And he pulled up a bunch of names, and then he said, I'm going to write a blog. Who's the best swimming pool manufacturer? And guess what? Whenever somebody does that, guess whose website comes up? His. He didn't hire anybody. And then he outsold all of the competition. So for me, with no budget, I said, hmm, I wonder if that can apply to notaries. 
So guess what happens? Notary near me. How are people finding you? What are they doing? They're Googling. I don't know any, I don't know this thing, Notary and that's Public. that's the most popular phrase, Notary, notary near, near me. me. And that gets you a lot of hits. But I didn't hire, and in my area, one of the biggest complaints I get, and I'm sure Doug has heard this, why are you teaching all these notaries how to make money? It's putting too much, many notaries in the business. That's what I get all the time. But let me give you the one secret, whether you're seasoned or a new notary, the one secret that's gonna make you money all the time. Here's a secret. You can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on courses. You can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing, but your business will completely fail unless you take care of this one area. You have to flat out give the best service in your area. You cannot have poor service and expect to make money in this business. You cannot be holding on to documents. You cannot be not communicating back to the clients. You have to have flat out good service. And it starts with even answering the phone. Do you answer your phone on the first call? You know what I'm talking about, right? Answer your phone on the first ring. When that company calls you and says, hey, we need a notary, this is what I always say. Ding, hey, Daniel, can you do a job at this? This is Betty. Betty, you know what? You're one of my favorite people. I say that every time. Oh, Daniel, thanks you so much. You know what Betty's doing? Betty's calling to put money in my pocket. Sometimes when you call, yeah, I don't know. How far is it? Oh, God. What county? When are you going to pay me? Is it two customers? You know what I'm talking about. Yes, that little thing, that little thing, not spending tons of money on marketing, not spending tons of money on business cards, shiny business cards. Those little things like that will pound money in your pocket year after year after year. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to protect your business. How do you protect your notary business? Sometimes I get mentoring notaries. They say, well, the state don't require me to have this stuff this E&O insurance stuff, so I'm not going to have it because that's an expense to me. Let me tell you, you're in business. You make a mistake. As a notary, you're going to go through documents during the week. You're going to go through over a million dollars worth of assets, and you're going to tell yourself you don't need insurance to protect you. I want to talk about uh, financial planning for your business, but you should have an end game in mind. Um, it's called retirement. You got to understand your business, understand how much it costs you to do that service. It costs you 35 bucks to do it and you're doing it for 25 bucks. Sooner or later, you're going to be out of business. And you should keep in mind everything. Paper, ink, gas, maintenance on your vehicle. Write up a budget for yourself. There's budgets online that will really help you just outline everything. Make sure your business is properly protected. Make sure you're properly protected. One of the things I offer a lot of notaries is critical illness insurance. Anybody knows what critical illness insurance? Huh? You do know. Jamie knows. I unfortunately had to cash in on a critical illness in 2010. 2010 was a banner year. It was notary of the year, honorary secretary of state's office, and I was diagnosed with cancer in 2010. And I had to use my critical illness benefit. But most notaries don't they think it's an expense. It's an expense until you have some issue. Until you're, how many people drive everywhere to their notary assignments? And that's all? Nobody, how many, put your hands up. How many people drive everywhere to your notary assignments? Because most of you, you drive everywhere, you, you consider yourself safe drivers, right? Not having critical illness insurance means you think everybody around you is a safe driver. I just had a notary in, my, in Indianapolis got hit from the behind mm. from somebody and he took off. So make sure you properly protect yourself. Make sure you're managing your debt. Sometimes notaries kind of like to put a bunch of stuff on credit cards. As a financial planner, I would want you not to be paying interest, but be earning interest. You should be thinking about building wealth for yourself. When you're doing these closings, a lot of times notaries just completely take that completely out of their picture because they're so busy just operating their business, they're not thinking, at some point, I need to build wealth for myself. This is a wealth building machine. The notary business for me is my foundation of my businesses.
And you can build wealth with the notary business, but you have to be obsessed with efficient, effective, and being profitable. You have to be obsessed with that. Every quarter, running the numbers and knowing where your numbers are. You should have an emergency fund. Emergency fund should be three to six months of your expenses. So first of all, in that first category, cash flow, you need to know what your cash flow is, what your expenses are each month. And then once you get that, figure out, wait a minute, I'm spending too much money here. In my case, I was spending too much money, and this is a while ago, at McDonald's, Burger King, Mr. Taco Bell, because you go from here to here to here to here to here to here. When do you eat? Oh, there's a convenient place right there. But you make adjustments. You know how much money you save if you just go to a Costco or Sam's, buy a lunch and pack it for on a Sunday and then have that each week from going to Mr. Burger King, McDonald's, Costco's, and also it's good for your health too, right? So build an emergency fund three to six months of savings in your expense account. And then you have to work on preserving your wealth. Now, let us hear for Judith Lawrence. Yay. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about me first. I own a uh, company in Center City, Philadelphia, and uh, we do an enormous amount of um, general notary work. And as we go along, I'll tell you how I did it. Okay. General notary work can be for anyone, attorneys, physicians, nurses, banks, accountants, borrowers, students. Students always need things notarized. Business owners, and the list continues. You will find if you go into general notary work that um, certain times of the year, graduations come, especially medical students, and they have to have their paperwork notarized. So their uh, campaign finance reports, they're due at certain times of the year. With a general notary work business, you kind of have to be on top of your game. Location is one of your most important ingredients. So if you're near a college, then go over to the college and say, hey, I'm here. If you're near six hospitals, um, go to these hospitals, introduce yourself, you hand them a business card, and you say, you know, I'm only five minutes from you, so you can call me at the last minute, and I'll get there. Um, and then, of course, the second thing that you have to do with that is when they call you at the last minute, you have to really get there. So you can't, you know, you have to do that. My most important slide that I'm going to talk to you about, and it says, what do you need to start in a computer and, and all that and a website, and a website is critical, but... In my mind, as I look back on my journey and I look back on the last five years, what you really need is to make yourself the expert. And I'll give you an example. When I say the expert, um, you have to read about them, you have to find a course and take a course about them, you have to talk to someone else who does them, so that when the person comes in and says, hey, do you do I-9 verifications? You say, yes, I do, and you can pass maybe one piece of knowledge to them that they know that they've come into a place and you are the expert. And people generally will, won't mind paying you that extra $2 or even $5 because they'll say, I, I, that's all right, I'll go to her because she really knows, she knows what she's doing. And again, you go back to learning, which is why you're here. And if I can make a difference to any of you, it's to go out there and learn and, and be able to offer these people the best, offer them the best, the, the expert knowledge of all of this. So that's, that's kind of my, my creed. Thank you, and you guys have been wonderful. Thank you, you guys have been great.